Hey fools, I'm Eric Bleeker, joined here by Joe Tenebruso from Supernova and Stock Advisor, two different products. Being an analyst on our products, I want to look at uh, you know portfolio candidates, so to say, Microsoft. Based on your looks at the company and uh, some recent actions, such as the Nokia device acquisition, would you be inclined, gun to head, to buy, sell, or hold Microsoft? It's a lot of attractive aspects of Microsoft's business. First and foremost, I think about switching costs. It, it's so hard to kind of pry yourself off of Windows when you're accustomed to the operating system, when you're accustomed to Microsoft's kind of office applications, you know, especially in, in a business setting. A lot of people, as analysts, we're kind of trained on Excel, right? We, some of us will say we live in Excel uh, on, on most days. And that type of powerful switching costs is valuable. Right, it leads to sustained cash flow generation, and if that cash flow is invested wisely, it could it could lead to very strong stock price appreciation. Unfortunately, that's where Microsoft, I believe, falls short. They make acquisitions that don't pan out. They don't necessarily use that cash flow in a value creating manner as much as possibly they could. And here I'm talking about maybe just rather than making some of these acquisitions, increase share buybacks, increase the dividend, and. Unfortunately, where Microsoft might fall short to the greatest extent is at the leadership position. Uh, you know, I don't like to speak badly about people, but Bomber is not someone that I would put in terms of top tier leaders. Um, and so when I look at an investment, every investment, I look at the opportunity costs, right? Every dollar I invest in Microsoft is a dollar I can't invest in Apple. It's a dollar I can't invest in Google or Amazon or even Facebook. And I'd rather own all of those companies than Microsoft at this point. And the bottom line is, too, the biggest reason for investing in Microsoft right now is valuation. That trades uh, pretty cheaply, especially from a cash flow perspective, a price to earnings perspective. But, you know, it's not in isolation. We need to look at the total landscape of technology. And so many other companies are trading relatively cheaply as well. You mentioned Apple as an obvious candidate, but you could even go for something like uh, Intel. And, you know, if, if maybe I was looking for a PC player between the two of them, well, Intel could probably cut a lot of costs right now if they wanted to. They choose to spend, but I could actually see some more near-term callus on their horizon, per se, with them, versus Microsoft, which has made seemingly every indication with the Nokia acquisition that it's going to go deeper down this path of, you know, burning money on mobile. So for Microsoft, it's just... There's too many value candidates in technology to make them a top choice, especially when you have uncertain business avenues they're moving into with the Nokia acquisition that, again, can burn that capital from your cash cow units. Yeah, you know, we've seen Microsoft kind of fight losing battles maybe longer than they should have. Uh, Bing, their internet division, I believe has lost something like $16 billion. And, you know, it comes a point where things aren't working. You know, the, the the profit, the growth, the, the revenue, it's just not materializing. And that, those, that capital could be better served simply returning it to, ca uh, to shareholders, right? And so I just think, yes, Microsoft has tremendous cash flow generation, but I'm not sure we can value it at you know, face value because of its destructive tendencies. There you go. From Joe Tambruso, Apple, or sorry, Microsoft being on the sell line too many other values in technology right now. Too many great companies. So for all your news on Microsoft or for technology in general, head back to fool.com. Fool on.